Hello guys, Luna here, and welcome back to another video. The new Warzone Pacific map Caldera is out today for those who own Vanguard, and tomorrow for anyone else, and the patch notes are out now, going over all of the changes. So I'm going to go through what's new in the game for Warzone Vanguard Season 1. Let's jump into them. First, the update size. Warzone's update sizes are for PlayStation 5 and 4, 44.7 gigabytes. On the Xbox Series X, S and 1, 41.2 gigabytes. For PC, it's 37.8 gigabytes for Warzone only, and 69.1 gigabytes for both Warzone and Modern Warfare. But you'll need an additional 8 gigabytes in order to download the update. Okay, so what about the available playlists in the first week? We have Vanguard Royale, Solo Duos and Trios, and I will go over that in a bit more detail. Vanguard Resurgent Quads, BR Quads, and Plunder Trios. Next week, Rebirth Island will also return to the game. Now, since Vanguard Royal is a new mode, I will go over the details of that. This new mode will focus on a few key pillars. Dogfighting planes and anti-aircraft combat. So players will be with World War II era rule sets, having access to Vanguard only themed weapons, operators, vehicles, killstreaks and more. This rule set will also extend to custom player loadouts and you can see what is and is not available on screen during the mode. New environmental hazards, bombing runs will occur throughout each game at random at any given time. In addition, a number of changes should be expected as well, including larger initial circle and public events per circle. So for circle one, after that weapon crates or cash drops will be available. Circle two will give you loadout drops. Circle 3 will have a fire sale. Circle 4, weapon crates or cash drops, or resurgence or jailbreak or loadout drops, which is a much lower probability. Circle 5 will give you a restock. Circle 6 will give you loadout drops. And Circle 7 and 8, public events conclude and you're on your own. And a little note about buy stations. Loadout markers will be available for purchase after the loadout drop public event. And UAVs will not be available from buy stations in this mode, but can be acquired as contract rewards. Lastly, players who play the mode can earn a unique emblem and calling card. All right, let's move on. As well as the new map, there is, of course, a new Gulag designed with the knowledge of the last few years of Warzone gameplay, so hopefully it's going to be a fun one, and you can see an image of that on the screen. What about new stuff added to the map? Players will get access to over 40 new weapons, over a dozen new operators, new prestige, calling cards, emblems, and more. Three new vehicles will be added, the fighter plane, utility truck, and squad transporter. There will also be three new contracts available, top secret, which is a contract which is selected at random, but with a higher increase in reward. Big game bounty, where you can hunt down an operator with a really high kill streak. And lastly, a supply drop, which gives you a valuable supply crate, which will drop on the map, and its coordinates are only seen by your team, but the others can see the green smoke. New public events as well, restock, all supply boxes on the map will close again and refresh their loot. Resurgence, for a short duration, the resurgence effects will allow players to respawn so long as a teammate is boots on the ground. Cash drop, the well-known plunder cash drops will begin to spawn. And heavy weapon crate, new and highly desirable weapons can be obtained from these crates. And that's a pretty common feature we've seen in Battle Royale games. Next, a new tack map, and it allows players who are dead and in the gulag to place markers, which will be a very handy new mechanic. And to go with that, there is a bunch of other new mechanics and gameplay features. So players will now be able to fly using the fighter plane. Anti-aircraft guns. They will be fixed to the ground or mounted on the back of the utility truck and you can use these weapons to clear the skies of the planes. And let's hope that they are as fun to use as they were in a game like Battlefield 1, but we will have to wait and see about that. The gasoline can, pick them up, ignite them, throw them up in a sender, set up a trap, shoot at them in the ground or in someone's hands. They not only explode, but they also release a non-toxic smoke, which can be used similar to a smoke grenade. There is also shallow water in the game where you can throw Molokov cocktails and thermites, probably the gas can as well, and when you shoot them, they will behave similarly to smoke grenades. The tracer perk effect will be enabled for players in water that reaches their ankles. The cold-blooded perk will be enabled for players in water as well when it reaches their knees, and players will be unable to go prone fully in knee-deep water. So that is everything for new game changes, items, gameplay, etc. But what about game adjustments for things that are already in the game? Let's take a look. The stopping power field upgrade has been removed from the loot pool. The Gulag will now allow the Victor to redeploy with the weapons and equipment that remain at the end of the duel. Buy stations have changed the UAVs from $4,000 to $6,000. 
Loadout drops can only be bought at buy stations after the first free loadout drop public event has taken place, but that only affects Vanguard Royale and Battle Royale. The Dead Silence field upgrade will now refresh on the first kill only, and it reduces its drop rates found in loot as well. Melee damage and melee weapons will now require at least three hits to achieve melee finisher damage, and there will also be some other changes to melee weapons as well, but I will go over that later in the video. For Claymore's damage has increased to 200 up from 150 and that's one I'm looking forward to because I always felt they were a bit under damaged. Frag grenades damage increased from 112 or 225 up from 70 or 140 depending on the distance the damage was from the player. To the Molotov cocktail damage per tick increased to 21, 36 or 43 up from 15, 25 and 30 and the duration increased to 12.5 seconds up from 6.5. Proximity mine damage increased to 225 up from 200. Samtex increased damage from 74 or 150 up from 70 or 140. Throwing knife damage increased to 250 up from 200 on hits to upper torso and headshots only. So all of the lethal equipment has had big buffs to them. To tactical equipment, the decoy grenade will now fire rubber bullets with a chance to hit nearby enemies dealing one point of damage. The heartbeat sensor pulse time increased to 6 seconds, up from 3 seconds. Snapshot grenade detection radius increased to 28 meters, up from 14. Stim will additionally apply a 3 second boost that increases movement, slide and sprint speed. Stun grenade duration decreased to 2.5 slash 4.5 seconds, down from 4.7 or 5.5 seconds, and that's a very welcome change. The gas mask animation will now wait for reloading, armor plate insertion or grenade throwing animations to complete before going on. Next up, user interface and user experience changes. A new interface tab that now hosts the pre-existing accessibility and HUD options is available. Graphic options have been split into two tabs, display and quality, additions of the following options, minimum and maximum input dead zones per stick, new changes to walk keybind and speed settings so players can assign a key to the new walk option and customize the speed at which the walk key makes you move. And you can also customize sensitivity per zoom so players can now customize their sensitivity per add sensitivity multiplier type. And of course guys as you've probably noticed the change which was being added to console which was previously mentioned before which was the field of view slider has not been added into the game. So whether that will come at a future update we don't know but it's more than likely that it's just something that they promised that they're not going to deliver so I wouldn't get your hopes up about seeing that feature anytime soon in Warzone. Let's move on then to new weapons in the game. For assault rifles we have the AS44, Cooper Carbine, NZ-41 and the Volksturm Gear. For the handguns we have the 1911, Clouser, Machine Pistol, Rat and Top Break. Launchers include the M1 Bazooka, MK11 Launcher, Panzerfaust and Panzer Shrek. LMGs, the DP-27, MG-42 and Type 11. For melee we have the Vanguard version of the Combat Shield, FS Fighting Knife and Sawtooth. We have new shotguns, the Combat Shotgun, Double Barrel, Einhorn Revolving and Gracie Auto. Sniper Rifles, the Three Line Rifle, the Gorenko anti-tank rifle, Car 98 Vanguard version, and the Type 99. For submachine guns, we have the M1912, Owen, PPSH-41 Vanguard version, Sten, and the Type 100. To tactical rifles, we have the G43, M1 Garand, and the SVT-40. And last but not least, a new melee weapon, the Katana, but that won't be releasing until later in the season. There will also be some other weapons added into the game as well, which I haven't mentioned here, because the patch notes only mention what they are called in-game, which is like SMG Echo, for example, but you will see them when you go in-game. So there's new weapon adjustments to most of the melee weapons, and pretty much all of them are nerfs. So the Ballistic Knife, the melee damage decreased to 98 from 135. Battle Axe damage decreased to 135 down from 175. The cane damage decreased to 135, down from 150. The Kali sticks damage decreased to 65, down from 90. Long distance decreased by 7.7%. Melee finisher now requires 4 hits, up from 2. And these changes also affect Modern Warfare multiplayer as well as Warzone. The mace damage decreased to 135, down from 150. And the side damage decreased to 70, down from 135. Long distance decreased by 7.7%. And melee finisher now requires 4 hits, up from 2. Last guys, we have three new operators coming in launch or in the season. Francis, Lana Killa, Lewis Howard and Isabella Rosario Del Nguyen Reyes. So guys, that is all of the changes available in the new Warzone Pacific map for Season 1 of Vanguard. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below about the update. Like and subscribe to stay updated on Warzone and more Xbox related stuff as well. And I will catch you in the next one.